Hello and welcome to Band Then and Now on M6 Television. Today we're here with three senior band members, Aaron Armstead, Scott Sanders, and Taylor Fox. Let's start off with your band origins. Taylor, when did you start band? I started band in the fifth grade. Uh, in fourth grade we got to do instrument tryouts and that's when I decided I wanted to be in band and it sounded like a really fun thing to do. So is it the same for you guys? Did you all start in fifth grade? Yeah, I was in yeah. fifth grade. So how did you choose your instrument, Scott? Well, for me, it seemed really hard to like make a sound out of an instrument. So I just went with the easy way at the time and chose the drums. How about you, Aaron? Well, for me, for trombone, it was a bit weird because for years I always wanted to play the bassoon because it was a pretty weird instrument. It's known as a clown of the orchestra, so I figured why not? But then my older brother who was in band, he told me, no, you won't be able to play it in fifth grade. Then I still wanted to, then Mrs. Martin, the fifth grade music teacher at Garden said, no, not in fifth grade. So I'm like, eh, trombone. <laughs> no idea why trombone, just it was weird also. So how about you, you play the clarinet? Yeah, um, I actually did not want to start with the clarinet. <laughs> um, I wanted to play the xylophone actually, but I realized, well, no. <laughs> so I, I really like the clarinet, so I played that. Aaron, do you have any band stories from the middle school that you'd like to share? Boy, middle school. I cannot think of any offhand right now. Well, want to pass to someone, I might yeah. come back. Yeah, Scott, do you have any? That yeah, I remember, uh, I think it was eighth grade, uh, we were, uh, Nick Cook and I were practicing for solo ensemble, and we would always like hide ourselves in the drum cabinets and practice in the drum cabinets, and then like Mr. Duso would like wonder where we are, and then he'd open them up, and we'd just be like in there in the dark by ourselves <laughs> practicing. <laughs> That's funny. So when did you start taking band more seriously then? Well, I started taking it seriously in like sixth grade when I got like halfway down the line in my first playing test and I wasn't really happy with not being one of the best so then I started practicing daily. Mm -hmm. So how about you when did you start really trying harder in band or were you trying hard from the start? Well fifth grade was just kind of you know woo I'm here I'm mm -hmm. doing it but sixth grade kind of like Scott um, my first playing test I got like third chair or something and I was like I cannot be beat out every single time so <laughs> I tried uh, practicing a lot and hoped that I got first chair. So, Aaron, what type of events did you guys participate in middle school? Uh, there weren't a whole lot of events really for middle school. Like sixth grade, all you did was concerts. Seventh grade, you add on the Bandorama concert, and then festival came over. I know for me, I started early in solo ensemble. I started in seventh grade. But other than that, it was really just band festivals, and I know I did our band, and actually two our bands in middle school, but it wasn't really a whole lot of events. Mm -hmm. It's like just you went to Port Huron High School for festival, you got your rating, and or not, we could have made it at the time. We would go states. So you went to Disney in eighth grade, didn't you? Yes. What was that like? The most amazing thing, that was actually my first time in Disney, and I got to go with my best friend, Alyssa Wood, so that made it a whole lot better. And the whole experience was just so surreal, and I couldn't wait to go again. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So you guys both went to Blue Lake, right? What was oh, yes. that like, Scott? Well, the first year was really like overwhelming to me because there were so many other students that were just as dedicated on their instruments as I was. And like before then, I thought I was like so good and everything. And then I went there and I was kind of humbled a little bit. But you know, as like the time progressed, and I went this, uh, the year after that and the year after that, and it just became like a really comfortable experience. And it was like, it was a good learning experience as well because I learned a lot of things that I would have never learned otherwise. Aaron, how did Blue Lake benefit you? Yeah, for me, I fear it was the same thing. It humbled me a lot since for there, it, n it didn't matter what grade you were in because, like, if you went for high school session, you would have, you could have just been coming out of eighth grade going into ninth grade, and you could be playing against seniors. Or for middle school, if you're in the main camp, you could have been going to sixth grade, and you would be playing against people going to ninth grade. So for me, it did humble me. Like, first year, I was second chair. I'm used to being first. Now a whole lot of competition in my grade. But other than that, outside of humbling, it really helped as far as trying to focus on certain areas since you would start off a day, usually, for me it was usually with my technique class where we'd have a trombone professor from a college. Like my, the second year I went, it was a trombone professor from Eastern. So he would he would give me stuff like for warm-ups, warm-downs, how to develop your sound, articulation. It was really a big benefit. 
Definitely. So did you guys attend any other camps while you were in middle school? I went to uh, the drumline camp at Alma College with Nick Cook as well. And that was one of the funnest weeks I've ever had in my entire life. We did a whole bunch of like cool tricks and like it was strictly drumline. So that was really cool. And I um, was able to like have the uh, drumline instructor from the University of South Car uh, Southern California, so USC. And that was like totally crazy to know that mm -hmm. like someone from that big of a school was like teaching me things. And it was just cool to meet like other kids that were like crazy about drumline and stuff. And we did like, like I said, a whole bunch of cool tricks that we would never do here. Right. <laughs> so that was, it was really, really cool. That does sound really cool. We'll be back to talk about high school band after this. storms and icy roads come around the corner, it is important that you slow down and give yourself extra time to get places. It is very important that we do not rush through the winter roads to protect ourselves and others. There are over 6 million car accidents a year, and 26% of those accidents are caused from snowy, icy, and slushy road conditions. What a wonderful world. It is a good idea to keep a nice pair of boots, a blanket, a full tank of gas, jumper cables, a tow strap, and a flashlight in the car at all times. As the snow comes and the roads worsen, these tips may help you stay warm and safe as winter comes to greet us in Michigan. Welcome back to Band Then and Now on M6, your hometown station. We're here with Scott Sanders, Taylor Fox, and Aaron Armstead to talk about high school band. So, Aaron, ninth grade was the first time participating in marching band. How did that feel? Mm, marching band to, didn't feel out of order. It was a nice break, for one thing, after three years of concert band. It was getting rather monotonous. Mm -hmm. Like, you're doing the same thing over and over. It was like, I was sick of it, my band. <laughs> Right. And marching band is like about time since I've seen my brother go through marching band when I was a whole lot younger, like seeing him go through when they got like fifth place at Ford Field. So I fear it was about time. I kind of saw what to do, but it was a whole new thing. And to be honest, I guess, really. So how was your marching band experience, Scott? Well, for me, unlike Aaron, I didn't have any older siblings to have any right. like knowledge of it. So I didn't really have any idea what I was getting into going in, like going into it, but I was really looking forward to it because I knew drumline, like marching band drumlines were like really cool. Mm -hmm. So that was exciting. And like my first time putting on my drum, I remember it being like painfully heavy and the practices were like mm -hmm. excruciatingly long. But it got better as the years went on. As far as like the actual freshman band goes, it was it was humbling as well to like see all these seniors teaching us and I like felt right. like it was going to take forever to get into their position but here I am now. But it was just really nice to like be able to, you know, have students teach me because like I didn't know how Mr. Duso was going to act marching season wise. So it it was a good experience for me. How about you Taylor? What was your experience like? Well, it was definitely a change from middle school. Uh, like Aaron, it just got really boring and middle school started to become just a little, you know, like hit the snooze button, keep going. Mm -hmm. And um, so freshman band, I, I mean, I liked it, but I definitely don't like freshman marching band as much as I do the regiment. It, right. I honestly hated freshman band <laughs> so much. Uh, I don't know why it, it just, it seemed like it went on forever. Right. And it, I mean, I didn't mind uh, the people teaching us. I actually really enjoyed them. Um, it was just, it got really old, right. I guess. So this year, you're the head drum major, right? Yes. So what sacrifices have you had to make? Well, I played volleyball all my life, 
and to be drum major, you got to give up your fall sport. Mm -hmm. So um, last year, I was lucky enough when I came into being drum major, I was able to continue playing volleyball. But this year, since I was the head drum major, I had to make that commitment, the, mm -hmm. you know, for the whole time. So I had to quit volleyball, and it was hard. I right. mean, it, I've loved the sport ever since I was a little girl, mm -hmm. so giving it up was a little hard, but um, I think it was the right decision. So did you have to give up playing your instrument as well during the season? Yeah, just for the season and then concert band, I go back to playing my clarinet, um, which is fine, because I guess after a while you start to miss it, so. Right. <laughs> um, it was a cool thing, I guess, to yeah. get away from it. But. So I'm sure it's difficult balancing school and band, and you guys have practiced all day and all night during marching season in the fall. So Aaron, how did you deal with all that stress? Um, barely. Barely. <laughs> Especially like this year since I decided to take AP Comp. Mm. Not the smartest idea. You do have a work of three AP classes, it makes AP Bio look easy, I swear. <laughs> to the point that then you're trying to balance that, trying to get your homework done each day. You're trying to balance getting sectionals, 7 a.m.s, lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm one that my brain seems to shut off like just at like 4 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to appreciate sleep a whole lot, but <laughs> trying to manage it, I never really had, um, I guess, like a formal lesson plan, just like stuff we had to work on over the week. Mm -hmm. Like 7 a.m., so it was like, just get up, make sure you get there in time. And also, I had to make sure that I was an example for my section since right. I, had, I wasn't as lucky as some with bigger sections since I was a section leader of 12 trombones total, which in past, that is quite a common fact. There used to be a low brass section where mm. one person would take care of a tubas, tenors, bass clarinet at the time, baritones, trombones, all one person. Then it's now split to a point that a low brass section keeps on growing for some reason, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, I have 12, and I'm the only senior. Oh, wow. Compared to past years where you might have an assistant. So it was kind of hard since I couldn't be as strict as I wanted to be. I had to be very lax. I had to let the juniors have some level of leadership, yet they still had to look up to me. Right. So You definitely had to be an example being yeah. a senior. Yeah. Each time I marched, I gave it my all. Mm -hmm. In fact, usually when we go to the stadium, it, for uh, marching we do, it's called glide step, where your toes have to be high up in that when you step down and you roll your feet. If you're doing it right, your muscles, I believe your um, shins, I believe, uh, front muscle, fat, usually after a while, you'll feel it. <laughs> It'll burn. Right. I made sure that each time I marched to stadium, it was burning. That's really Just good. Just make sure. So Scott, how do you deal with all the stress? Well, for me, like there wasn't really any other place I'd rather be than like with the marching band mm -hmm. family, because that's what it is to me. It's a like a second family. I love everyone in marching band, especially all this, like my fellow seniors. So for me, it was like kind of like a stress reliever to be at with like my marching band family. Mm -hmm. And like Aaron said, the lack of sleep definitely gets to you after a while, like towards the end of the marching season, it's <laughs> like, oh, okay, get up, <laughs> go to 7 a.m.s again. And the drumline has to be there earlier than everyone else and start warming up outside in the freezing cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a drag. Right. But you know, it's it's all worth it in the end. You know, once you step onto Ford Field, it's, it's all. It, you you look back and you actually miss it once it's over. Mm -hmm. Especially since we're seniors and now it's over for good. In yeah. fact, we almost didn't when I think that added to more stress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, as Octo like middle October, end of October starts coming around, like everyone gets you know tense. You know, seniors try to like get the sophomores to get on the same page as us. You mm -hmm. know, this is a big deal. We have to you know push till the end. Some people just don't get it. That was the kind of the, the biggest, you know, trigger for stress for me was trying to like get the younger people on the same page with me and the rest of the seniors in my section. Right. So that was my biggest challenge. But as far as like dealing with the stress, I loved being there. So it wasn't really too stressful for right. me. But I had also had a job and all that kind of all that kind of stuff. So. So um, the regiment goes to Hillside, um, I'm sorry, Hillsdale Band Camp every summer. So what are some of the things that you do there? Well, as soon as we get there, we like to unload and we get there around lunchtime mm -hmm. so we can take a breather, get off the bus, unpack our stuff, set up our room, and then we go to lunch and then we meet every day down in the lobby, <coughs> excuse me, to what is called pit. And mm. then he talks about, you know, 
we're gonna do this today, we're gonna do this, blah, blah, blah. So we walk like 50 miles down to the field. It was literally the longest walk of my life. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me again. Um, we would get there and then we do like a little warm up and um, like stretch sometimes. And then uh, Mr. Dusso's daughter, Brianna, would go through and do different exercises with us. And then we would just work on the show over and over <laughs> and over. And we're there for like three to three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And then we go to our next meal. Then we go to pit again, go back, do the same thing. How many times do you think you like go through the song or the show? I don't know, maybe. Complete? Um, <laughs> oh, <wow>. Complete <laughs> twice, complete. Yeah. yeah, complete, yeah, but bits and pieces, oh man, over like 20 times it seems like it. It's just stop, 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 right. go whole, back. It's a whole different experience. It is, it, it, it's a process, but yeah. it, it's a lot of fun. And then, you know, after uh, the night practice, we come back and then mm -hmm. we have different events. Um, the parents like to put on like talent shows, karaoke night. Um, and then we have a rave mm -hmm. and campfire. So, I mean, it's fun between rehearsals. Really cool experiences. So, yeah. I'd like to elaborate on this because it's a very different experience compared to the rest of the marching season. Right. Now, granted, we're no longer going to be able to go in there. Very, the band's now going to be going to a place a little bit closer, which would be nice for them. Just you had to go three hours. Hopefully, buses had no problems. We've had mm -hmm. that happen in the past. Right. Every year. Like the bus, <laughs> two, one bus broke down on Dequinder, going down I-94. Then while we were waiting, the second bus broke down. <laughs> the next year, we had one. We said, okay, we're going to Hillsdale. They thought they were meant picking us up at Hillsdale. <laughs> that was a good time. Hopefully, there's only one of the buses. But this year, we really had no problems with the buses. But this but this year as a senior, you expected to have your leadership in that starting. I'm mm -hmm. not sure about you, Taylor, but for us, we were still paying our dues at that point. <laughs> and how we couldn't give any leadership, we had, we were basically just like everyone else. Right. But either way, I felt like I still had to at least provide something, so mm -hmm. I had to keep up the energy each time. Like, no matter what, going to a set, Taylor could probably testify to this. I doubt I walked maybe more than five times going back from one marching set to the other. He's right. an we animal. <laughs> yeah, I made sure I gave it my all each time because if not, once a senior is not doing it, everyone else is not doing right. it. So especially there, like the afternoon rehearsal, that one I wish we could just get rid of. So the beginning of marching season starts with band camp and the end start, or ends with the um, state championship at Ford Field. So Scott, how did you guys do this season at Ford Field? This season we placed the highest that we've ever had placed in my four years of high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We placed eighth out of 12th in the state and that was a really great feeling to you know, have the highest that we've had, especially going out as seniors. But not only our placement, we had the highest score that we've had in our four years of high school. So mm -hmm. that was also like the two hand in hand together. Just it was a great feeling, and Mr. Duso said himself it was just a fantastic day, and everything went like how he expected it, and it was just an overall it, it was a fantastic experience, and it was a great way to go out as a senior. That's One time really in cool. states, our score didn't go down. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good thing. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's like it was a great feeling towards the end. Like at Clawson competition, we got third. It's like expecting us to get last place. That's like in Hazel Park. But I was like, Lane, I'm like, well, we finally beat them. <laughs> I've never seen us beat them, and all the time we've been flight three. But I was like, Linda, it's like, finally. Right. I'm right for Thurston, it's like, well. <laughs> so <laughs> towards the end, we finally got our game on. So Yeah, so that's true. really cool. So um, did you have a favorite moment of being in the regiment? Well, I'm going to say just the whole experience. I mean, I can't really like pinpoint a specific one. Um, it's just a family. I've made my best friends there, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's what I'll remember most about the whole experience. Definitely. Yeah. That's really cool. All right, well, we're going to talk about future band plans right after this. As a parent, hire a trusted friend or family member to watch your child. Make sure to ask if they have taken a babysitter safety course, and if not, encourage them to do so. Give your sitter important contact information, such as your phone number and the number of your family doctor. As the sitter, make sure you are comfortable with the family and know what is expected of you. Clarify feeding directions with the parents and be aware of any food allergies. Make sure to be watching the child at all times and never leave them alone for long periods. 
If the child is sleeping, check on them every 15 minutes. In case of any emergencies, dial 911. For more information on babysitting safety and to learn where to take a babysitting basics course, log on to redcross.org. Being a gold medalist skier requires a lot of hard work, intense training, and time outside on the mountain. But taking care of my skin is easy and doesn't affect my performance. Every day I apply sunscreen and wear protective gear. I know protecting my skin will help prevent skin cancer and avoid wrinkles. I get my skin checked regularly by a dermatologist. One in five Americans will develop some form of skin cancer in their lifetime. My name is Julia Mancuso and I'm wearing orange to help put a spotlight on skin cancer. Welcome back to Band Then and Now on M6 Television. Our guests here are Taylor Fox, Scott Sanders, and Aaron Armstead. So we've covered the past and the present. Let's talk a little bit about the future. So you both want to study music in college, is that correct? Yes. So Scott, how do you feel that um, Band has prepared you for that experience? Uh, I feel like Mr. Dusso taught us you know, the beauty of hard work and that we can't really get anywhere in life without working hard for it. So I definitely have taken that in stride and have practiced and you know, got lessons, went all the band camps that we've talked about, and just everything that I possibly can, you know, be the best musician that I can be to be able to perform well in college. Right. How about you? I'd say also that gave me the idea of going into music. Right. Because I never really planned on doing it, like in all the years. I was like seeing, after like my brother did fifth place back when I was in sixth grade, it's like, oh yeah, why not? Just kept on getting back, get pulled back want to do this, want to do that, but still, this was always like one of the back burner, like, always try going to mm -hmm. music. That's really cool. So, what do you think you'll miss most about the past seven years in band? Well, I don't think I'm going to miss playing my clarinet <laughs> too much. I mean, I really enjoyed it, but mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned earlier, it, the friendships, you really can't beat it. It's probably the best thing that you can get out of the seven years of being in band. Um, if I wasn't in this class, I probably wouldn't have been so close to the friends that I right. have now. So I'm really grateful for it definitely that. Definitely changes your life. Yeah, for sure. So Scott, you got to participate in the Michigan State Symphonic Band. Mm -hmm. um, so what was that like participating in a college? That was definitely a different experience. I mean, the our conductor was a doctor of music right. at Michigan State, and he's actually second in hand to the top guy at of the School of Music at Michigan State, so he's kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, if you watch like the F Michigan State football games, you'll see him conducting the, the, their marching band on national television, right. so it's definitely cool, but it's kind of, it was intimidating my first day there. It was right. definitely really intimidating. You have, every single person is the like elite musician at their respective schools. Right. And you have kids that are from schools that have 2,000, almost 3,000 kids. So coming from a smaller school, it's definitely, you know, it's intimidating, but it's also very, you know, it's humbling, but it's a good experience, you know, to get, like I said, like with um, going to Blue Lake and everything, mm -hmm. you have kids that are just as dedicated on their instrument as you are. So we're able to get stuff done there. Definitely. So Aaron, what colleges are you looking at to study music? Well, for me, I was really going by the programs and that. I stay away from the Big Ten colleges for some reason. I think mm -hmm. money, also, some things like some colleges uh, requirements and that, like the auditions and that, like some of them you weren't what they were thinking when they said them. Like mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they know music. It can music. be really intense. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but for colleges specifically, I've been looking at Central, Western, and um, in Ohio, Bowling Green. Since mm -hmm. it's really, it's basically a Michigan school. It's only two hours away. Just have to leave. Right. So. So yeah, you definitely want to go smaller so you can have a more personal relationship oh, with yeah. those well, professors. They're, they're still good sized schools, but I go by ones that the band programs or the music programs, right. I should say, really stand out. Definitely. So Scott, what college for you seems to stick out more than the others do? Well, I'm looking at three right now, the three smaller schools like Aaron, but I'm looking at um, Central, Western, and Eastern Michigan. Mm -hmm. well, just like Aaron said, they, they have like that kind of smaller feel, but they're still good sized schools. Mm -hmm. And I guess the one that stands out most to me is uh, Western Michigan. I've toured all three and talked to the professors of percussion there, all three of them. Mm -hmm. And I guess, because that, that's kind of the, the biggest deal to me is like our relationship with the professor. Definitely. And the, uh, the professor of percussion at Western, I like the best. That's really cool. So have either of you tried out for any of the colleges yet? Um, not yet. I just, in fact, yesterday I just booked my first audition for Bowling Green, which is one I really want. Right. For 
central, they have some different things, like you cannot do it electronically, and you have to have certain things sent in, so I'm working on that one. I'm really going to save Bowling Green till last, though. Like, for auditioning, you have to try to have it be like, have your best college you really want last, because some way you'll be part of your audition. Right. How about you? Have you auditioned yet? I have mine scheduled. Okay. I have mine for the February, the 7th, 14th, and 15th. So I have all mine set. I'm just waiting to... Ready to do it? Ready to, well, I'm not ready, but <laughs> you know, going to do it. Neither am I. So you aren't going to college for music, right? Right. So how has band affected your life in a positive way then? Well, it's definitely been an experience for me. Um, I've thought about doing it in college. I just, for some reason, I mean... It's never really like been a huge deal to you me. You have other interests. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've wanted to be an engineer ever since my brother did it at state. So he's kind of like my inspiration to do that. So I kind mm. of want to focus on that more than I do music, but I will still love the music Definitely. and the band, so. Right, so Scott, um, do you think where else, where would you be right now without band, without music in your life? Can you picture yourself anywhere else? I can't really picture myself doing anything else with my life, <laughs> I mean. Like, like the fact that I'm going into music just says it all. I don't know what else I do. I don't feel like I'm really good at anything else than music. So. Right. Yeah, same here. Like for me, I would love doing TV here, but even when I pick like an op like when I try to build an opening and closing for any of my shows, I'm still very picky about the music, what mm -hmm. type I want, and how I use it. So. So you focus more on the music aspect. Yeah, the sound of that. Right. So how do you think it's benefited you just being in band and? Well, in many ways, like probably leadership, time management, mm -hmm. hard work, especially. Right. Because that's, to be honest, it's one of the few things I could really do that didn't look half hearted. Mm hmm. So it definitely changed your life. Mm hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Taylor, Scott, and Aaron for coming in today, and congratulations on all your accomplishments in the past seven years. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. joining us on Band Then and Now on M6, your hometown station.